Okay, here are all the tools you're going to need for an oil change on the Ducati Diavel. Uh, this is for a complete, oh my god, what I get myself into oil change, uh, including uh, a hack way to remove the air, or the, the oil filter if it gets stuck. Um, or if you don't have an oil filter wrench and uh, you're not able to get it off because it's somehow seized up more than hand tight. Uh, this also will show you how to remove the exhaust and uh, and how to tap off the sump cover and how to remove the uh, sump filter. So what you will need is <clears throat> at least four uh, four quarts of oil. Ideally, racing 4T, 10W40, or 15W50. I go with Mobile One, uh, Repsol, or Modal, uh, but it's all personal preference. I mean, a lot of the oils perform about the same, so. Just make sure you go with something that's that's designed for motorcycles because there are minor additives like molybdenum that aren't in uh, car oils. I was able to use car oil in my in my Triumph with no major ill effects, but uh, with a high-end twenty thousand dollar motorcycle like the Diablo, you probably don't want to be playing around and experimenting with that kind of stuff. So stick to four T. Uh, you want to use a torque wrench that goes down to eight foot pounds for the drain bolt. Uh, you can use the Ducati filter or a K&N uh, 153. You'll need needle nose pliers for the sump and the, uh, the springs on the exhaust. A ratchet. Uh, I'll zoom in here. You want to get hex drives that are 4mm and 5mm. Uh, that way you can use them with the torque wrench. You want a 12 millimeter wrench for the back side of the exhaust hanger bolt uh, right there. And you can either go with Ducati 3 Bond or uh, Ultra Gray for the gasket sealer for the sump. Uh, I also use a, a headlight that I wear on my head to so I can have my hands free to be working on the bike. Uh, for people with kind of crappy lighting in their garage like me, uh, that's super super handy because I mean much of the bike is black and pretty shady So that's really handy. Uh, you want to also have a screwdriver ideally a short one for popping off the little sump cover and uh, possibly a long handled one for uh, emergency removal of the oil filter if you aren't smart enough to use a K&N uh, and then just a mallet for uh, when you're tapping off the little sump cover. It, it's just for gentle use. That's why I'm not using a hammer. <clears throat> you're not going to be putting any force on anything. Just slowly. Because the uh, sump cover is glued down with the 3-bond, um, it takes a bit of coaxing to get off. I used a razor blade last time, but um, I think tapping it would be just as easy, and you're not really going to be leaving any marks as long as you're gentle. So Those are the parts you'll need, along with a oil pan, obviously and a bucket, something to dump the oil into. I just use these big uh, big white buckets and once they get full I'll take them to the auto shop and, and um, have them dispose of my oil. So that's all the parts you need and let's get started. I'm going to start out with uh, removing the exhaust. So when you remove the exhaust you just need to remove this exhaust hanger bracket bolt back here. And then you don't need to even remove the slip here. You can just uh, pull the springs off using the needle nose pliers. And the entire front piece. Just wiggle it back and forth. And it will come out. And that frees up the oil filter, which is right there behind the slips. So that'll give me more, more room when uh, taking off the oil filter. Okay, now you want to get a view underneath the engine. Uh, the sump is directly below the uh, oil sight glass and the Ducati Testa Stretta uh, symbol on the engine case. So when I come down here, this is the engine drain bolt. This is the sump filter uh, cover. The engine drain bolt uses the 5mm and uh, 
it might be on there a little bit tight if this is the first oil change you've ever done, but uh, just give it a nice counterclockwise turn. It will click loose. I've already loosened this one up a little bit. And then uh, ideally in a perfect world you have a pair of gloves to keep your hands clean, but just gradually undo the bolt, slide the oil pan underneath, and then remove it quick, and the oil dumps out. And uh, just wait for this to, to finish. You can start removing the sump bolts while you wait for that to happen. For that, you're going to want the 4 millimeter. Just come in and crack them loose. I like to alternate uh, to keep the uh, the torque evened out. These do get glued down a little bit because of the uh, the three bond, so don't be nervous if they take a little extra strength to pop loose. Um, also, you want to be very very careful if you're trying to use Allen keys. Do not use a ball hex. Um, because that can strip out your uh, your bolts, so it's best to use a nice sharp uh, edges on these. Then I'll gradually turn these out and come back once I've got the cover, all the bolts removed. Okay, now we're gonna try to move that move that uh, sump cover. For this, want to get your screwdriver and. Uh, protect your engine casing with your hand. Um, you might be able to kind of just pry down gently and it might come loose but that's not likely. So just line up your screwdriver with the very edge and just give some gentle taps and off it comes. <clears throat> you definitely want to have the oil pan underneath otherwise you'll get some spillage like I just did right there. Yeah, let me clean this up and I'll be right back and pull out the, uh, the sump filter. Okay. One thing to note is once you get the sump cover off, you've got all this gasket material you need to clean off. It comes off with just a nice little rag. I mean, just use your thumbnail through the rag and uh, just kind of scrape it off. It comes off pretty easily. You don't really need to use any special brush or anything to get it. Just try to get as much as you can out of the holes. And after I get this most of the way, I'll come back over and pull the sump out. Okay, now that that's all cleaned up, you can come in, you need your needle nose pliers, and reach up inside. You'll see a, a little round piece right here. That's what you need to grab onto. And then just give a nice little tug down. It comes right down, see? And I'll pull this out pretty long. And let's see what we've got. There's one little black piece of probably gasket material that was from inside the engine. Otherwise, not a whole lot of junk. It's all pretty clean. I mean, I went through and uh, cleaned the filter with the first oil change. And I think I even checked at this... No, I didn't bother to check at the second oil change at 3,000 miles. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty clean. So, just give this a quick wipe down with a clean rag. Now that it's all cleaned up, we're going to clean the pour out a little bit. There might still be a little bit of liquid gasket material up in there. And then we want to come in and just push it straight up in the way it came. It's a little tricky getting it lined up. You'll have to kind of feel around and eventually you'll feel it kind of pop up in. Then you just want to give it a nice little push. Come back and use uh, the bottom of your mallet to push it the rest of the way until it clicks. And there you go. It's back up in. And uh, we'll switch to a different view to show you how much uh, Ducati 3 Bond to use when putting the cover back on. Okay, with the sump cover all nice and cleaned up, I'm going to get out your Ducati 3 Bond or uh, Ultra Gray RTV silicone. Uh, I just stick with the 3 Bond because that's what Ducati uses. 
it's not all that expensive. You don't use that much. It lasts years. Um, unless you're doing a complete engine rebuild, which I would rather hand it off to a professional engine builder if I'm doing that. So you just want to goop on a little bit. The only place that it really needs to be is around the edges, remember, because the uh, the sump is in the middle. So just do a little bit of gooping around the outside and then use your finger to thin it out and get it around the bolt hole edges. Because really the seal that you need is around this circular area on the outside. So another instance where you could wear gloves. Um, I'm not going to sweat it. And I'm also going to use a rag to kind of dab and clean up the center part of this. But you just want a nice thin film. You don't want too much goop. Okay, so when you're all done, you want it to be kind of gooped like that. Um, we're going to stick it up in kind of like we're gluing it to the, uh, the underside. It's all symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't really matter which side points which direction. Uh, it's more about making sure that you just have a little thin layer of goop, clean up all the excess, and uh, go back to the underside. Okay, now before you stick it back on, you want to do just another little pass to make sure you didn't miss any little bits of oil that will prevent the gasket from getting a good, good seal. Clean off any extra little bits of the old gasket. Just comes right off the fingernail or a rag. And uh, once you've got it cleaned up, you can come in and just gently press the piece back on lining up with the holes and the nice thing about the gasket material is it kind of glues itself on see so you can come in with the bolts now thing to note is as you tighten these down you just want to start out nice and loose you don't want to tighten them down hard just spin them most of the way through until they're countersinking into the plate. And then you'll see the plate scoot around a little bit as you tighten each bolt down a little bit. So that's why you don't want to completely tighten one down all the way. You want to get them all screwed in first. Let the plate kind of adjust and slide around. And then that's that. We're going to come back and torque them. Now the torque for the drain plug bolt is uh, 14 foot-pounds. So I imagine these, because they're a smaller bolt, is probably going to be around 8. I think that's what the, uh, the 1098 manual said. So I'm just going to tighten these down to 8 foot-pounds first. If that feels way too light, then I uh, might snug them down by hand, but... There goes click. Then you want to alternate opposites. Make sure you get nice even torque. Click. Sure it's all the way in. Click and the last one. Click. There you go. Shouldn't need much more than that because you've got the, the RTV uh, holding everything on. And when I took these off last time, they were on pretty tight, so I'm not gonna have to worry about this backing itself out. You can just do some little final cleanup so you don't have excess gasket hanging off the sides or anything. Clean up the drain filter bolt a little bit more. I think it's fully drained now. Make sure to check the magnet on the end uh, of the bolt and clean it up. You can replace your copper washer, um, but uh, you can also anneal it. Uh, if I make a trip back home, then I'll probably do a video of that. But uh, copper washer just comes straight off 
and uh, it's a pretty common part you can get at the hardware store. So I'm going to clean this up. Clean a couple little tiny metal filings on the end of the magnet. It's pretty common for most bikes. I mean, I've only got about 6,000 miles on this now, so it's still little minor bits of break-in and anything left over from the initial break-in will still be coming out in the oil and hitting the magnet. So now, put the washer back on, put the bolt back up in there. And we're going to set our torque wrench to 14 foot-pounds. 14. Switch out back to the 5 millimeter. And there you go. Click. Okay, now we're going to come out and show the filter side. Okay, now here is what you do if you don't have a filter strap wrench. Um, or the filter socket from Ducati that fits perfectly. There are these tiny little gaps uh, in here. Like, I mean, you can see on the back side, there's hardly any space to get a filter wrench in there. That's why I'm switching to the KN. I use the KN on my 1098, it works a lot better. Um, only occasionally does the nut round itself off and. Uh, <clears throat> and require this process to remove the filter but uh, in case you ever get stuck in a situation where you just can't get the filter off this is a pretty safe method and uh, does not damage your engine you just have to be really fairly careful and gentle and uh, not be ham-fisted with this whole thing so basically what you do is you can use a pick or uh, a Phillips head screwdriver and basically what you're going to do is punch little holes in the very bottom of your filter. Uh, just very gentle taps. You want to use the pointed uh, edge of your, uh, your screwdriver and you just gently tap. You can see it already kind of dents in a little bit. You want to have your oil filter pan underneath, I mean your oil drain pan underneath, to catch oil that's going to come out. And also you'll notice as I'm tapping this, if you keep going in a good direction toward the uh, counterclockwise direction that you're, you would normally take your filter off, you can see it starts to turn a little bit. And there you go. It's starting to loosen up. So we'll just tap it a bit more. You can come in like that. The only thing you want to be careful about is not hitting and, and smacking your engine case. So just light taps, that's all it takes. You don't need to be ham fisted or anything, smacking on it. It's probably even loose enough for me to start doing hand tightening or loosening it. Just keep my hand clean, I'm going to use a rag. And there you go. Filter's all loose. I removed the uh, the belly pan cover. You will need a three millimeter uh, hex for. There's a little bolt all the way in the front up here, um, but the rest of them just take the regular four millimeter, and uh, you can pull the filter off the rest of the way. And messy. And I've already emptied my. Uh, drain pan so I don't have to worry about it splashing when the filter drops down. So then we want to come in here and clean up any excess oil that's been dripping down. Over. So you can see uh, up underneath, I want to wipe that, I want to get the stuff down in here. We're going to clean up into the top. Just give it a good wipe down. It doesn't need to be immaculate. Um, 
The nice thing about the k &N filters is that they come kind of pre-lubed where the seal hits up here. This, uh, this seal around the edge. You don't want it to be dry, otherwise your filter will kind of glue itself on when the uh, rubber gasket material um, heats up. It will kind of cook itself on to the metal surface. So that's why if you're using a filter that isn't doesn't come pre-lubed with some kind of grease, you just want to take a little bit of dab of oil and run it on the gasket surface. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to pull out the Canon filter. And show you it's about the same size as the stock filter. Oh, this one doesn't come with any grease on it. See, normally this gasket right here comes with a little bit of grease on it, but this one doesn't. So what we're going to do is dab your finger in the oil and just run your finger around that, that gasket to get a little bit of oil on there. That'll, uh, that'll help keep the, the filter from seizing up on the, the engine just a little bit. <clears throat> but as you can see, it's pretty much same part, same diameter, everything. <clears throat> it's also handy to pre-fill your, uh, your filter before you put it in. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, to make filling up uh, the engine and topping it off easier, what you want to do is pre-fill your filter as much as you can. Um, just go nice and slow. It's going to kind of bubble and pop as the filter fills up. It's kind of a tricky process, really easy to overfill. You don't have to do this, but it just makes the, uh, the topping off process a lot easier. So now, with that all filled up, we can uh, screw it onto the bike and torque it down. So, there's nothing too special about about putting the filter on. I mean, you just want to reach up in there, wipe off any leftover excess dribble that came down, and then just reach up, line it up, and it should just spin on nice and easy. And you don't want to do a full, full tightening. You just want it to be just hand tight. We're going to actually torque it down to the spec that's called for. Oh, and I need to get a uh, 17 millimeter socket, so I'll come back and get that. Okay, so the torque spec for the K&N filter, which requires a 17 millimeter socket, uh, is 8 foot pounds. So we're going to turn our torque wrench to 8. And just gradually tighten it down until it clicks. Yeah, and 8 isn't much, so it's going to be hard to tell when it's clicking if you're just cranking down. So there it's clicking right there. <clears throat> That's it. Filter's on. We're going to put everything back together and uh, start refilling. Okay, now we're going to gradually fill with three quarts until the... Uh, the third quart is in. Then we're going to start tipping the bike upright and uh, watching the sight glass. Now, easiest way to do this is just kind of lift the funnel a little bit up so you can get air going through. That helps the oil drop in. Different funnels flow a bit faster, but uh, this doesn't take too long. Okay, so we got three quarts in, and guess what? When you uh, have to tilt the camera down, but when you tip the bike up, lo and behold, it uh, actually hits the sight glass. Now, don't be fooled by this. That does not mean that the bike is actually filled. What you have to do is start the bike and uh, let the oil run through and fill up any empty cavities 
and then check it again. Top off a little bit more, idle the bike for a little bit. Usually about 10 to 20 seconds is enough. And then once you finally hit a, a happy medium point where uh, the sight glass is hitting after running the bike, then you want to take it out around the block and, uh, and just do one last final check. And uh, after you get back from that ride, check it again. So I'm going to top off and uh, start the bike, let it idle, and, and get through this process and come back. Oh, something also to note is uh, you need to tip the bike upright in order to check the oil. So notice that I just started the bike and let it uh, run for about 10 to 15 seconds. Note now, when I tip it up, no oil shown on the sight glass. Well, a tiny little bit. So I need to top off a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll actually put the funnel in and, uh, and fill it up just a tiny little bit until the sight glass shows a bit more and I may be able to go do a test run after uh, after this last top off so it looks like I only need one top off after filling up the filter and putting in three quarts so uh, yeah I'll come back right after this also of note when you're uh, topping up the bike and starting it and doing this process make sure to uh, screw in the filter cap don't leave the engine open just to be safe and uh, after a couple top-offs with the bike tipped upright got some glare from the camera you can see it's at a perfect level so there you go that's how you do an oil change on a Ducati Diablo if you guys have any questions just feel free to leave them in the comments